Okay, get your Bible ready to Genesis 14. Genesis 14. We're going to concentrate on that. If you didn't read the first 13 chapters, if you didn't read it, if you didn't listen to, to it or watch it, go back, pick up the Bible, follow along with me as you go back and, and listen to the other 13 so you will understand more how 14 will carry out. And, and what's going on when you read 14? Right now, we're on Genesis 14. And we will do the explanation of Genesis 14 like we did for the other chapters that we did previously. In the days of King M. Raphael of Shina, M. Raphael is A M R A P H E L. Get your pen and paper ready. Write down the names. Write down the the places, because most likely they will repeat themselves. That way, you have an idea of who the characters are in the Bible and what they did, who they are, and you better grasp the 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 knowledge of it a little bit more clearer. In the days of King Ephraphel of Shina, King Ariosh, A R I O C H, Ariosh of Elazar, E L E L L A S A R, King Shedalama, the C H E D O R L A O M E R of Elam, and King. Tidal, T-I-D-A-L, of Goim, G-O-I-I-M. These kings made war with king of Bera, B-E-R-A, king of Bera, of Saddam. And king, king Bersha, Bersha, B-I-R-S-H-A, of Gomorrah. King Shinab, S H I N A B, of Adma, A D M A H, King Shemeber, S H Shemeber, S H E M E B E R, of Zeboim, Z E B O I I M, and the King of Bela, B E L A. That is Zor. That name going to come up again, so pay attention to it. Zor. All these joined forces in the valley of Sidim. Sidim. S-I-D-D-I-M. That is the Dead Sea. Sidim. The valley of Sidim is the Dead Sea. These, the 12 years, 12 years, they had served Shedolamir, Shedolamir, King Shedolamir, that's who, that's who they served for 12 years, C-H-E-D-O-R-L-A-O-M-E-R. But in the 13 years, they rebelled. They went on strike. In the 14 year. Shedolamir and the kings who were with him came and subdued the Rephaim, Rephaim, that's R E P H A I M. They subdued the Rephaim and Ashtaroth. Ash. Ashtaroth Kanem, that's A S H T E R O T H hyphen K A R N A I M. The Zuzim, that's Z U Z I M, and Him. Remember, Him was, we'll get to that, and Him. 
the Emin, E M I M, the Emin, and Shaver Kiriothem, that's S H A V E H K I R I A T H A I M, and the Horites. H-O-R-I-T-E-S, and the hill century of Seir, C-E-I-R, as far, as far as El Paren, E-L-P-E-L hyphen P-A-I-N, on the edge of the wilderness. Then they turned back and came to and Miss Pat and and Miss Pat that is Kadesh that's E N hyphen M I S H P A T and Miss Pat that is Kadesh and subdue all the country of the Amalekite Amalekite that's A M A L E K I T E S A M A L E K I T E S. Get those names, get those names, write them down. You're going to see them again. And also the Ahamorites, A M O R I T E S, who lived in Haz Hazazan Tamar. H A Z A Z O N hyphen T A M A R. Then the king of Sadan, the king of Gomorrah, the king of Adma, and the king of Zeboin, and the king of Bela, that is Zor, went out and they joined battle in the valley of Sidem with King. Shedo, Shedo la mer of Elam, King Tidal of Goem, King M. Raphael of Shinar, and King Ariach of Elazar. Four kings against five. Now the valley of Sedan was full of bitumen pit. Bitumen pit, and as the kings of Sudan and Gomorrah fled, some fell into them, they fell into the pit, and the rest fled to the hill country. So the enemy took all the goods of Sudan and Gomorrah, and, and all their provision, and they went away. And and went their way. They also took Lot, the son of Abraham's brother, who lived in Saddam and his goods and departed. You're going to see how Abraham react to that. Who's going to get good? Then one who had escaped came and told Abram, the Hebrew, who was living by the oak of Manre, the Amorites, brother of Ishkol, and of Aner. These were allies of Abram. When Abram heard that his nephew had been taken captive, he led forth his trained men, born in his house, 318 of them, and went in pursuit as far as then. The name going to come up again, so pay attention. He divided his forces against them by night. He and his servant and rooted them and, pursu and pursued them to Ho. Hobah, H-O-B, 
A.H. Hoba, north of Damascus. Then he brought back all the goods and also brought back his nephew Lot with his good and the woman and the people. Verse 17, after his return from the defeat of Shedolamer and the king who were with him, the king of Saddam went out to meet him at the valley of Shaveh, that is the king valley, and king Melchizedek, and the king Melchizedek of Salam brought out bread and wine. He was priest of God most high. He blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram by God most high, maker of heaven and earth, and blessed be God most high, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. You're going to love the answer that Abram gave. And Abram gave him one tenth of everything. Then the king of Saddam says to Abram, Give me the persons but takes the goods for yourself but abram said to the king of saddam i have sworn to the, to the lord god most high maker of heaven and earth that i would not take a thread or a sandal thong or anything that is yours so that you might not say i have made Abram rich. I will take nothing but what the young men have eaten and the share of the men who went with me, Aner, Eshkol, and Manre. Let them take their share. Now, we're going to explain that. It's very simple. It's very good. We want to talk about the rescue and the blessing of Abram. In verse 1 to 11, it talk about a, co a coalition of kings. From the east attacks the area around Saddam and Gomorrah. Shinar, on verse 1, is probably... Babylon and probably Babylon when you read Genesis 10 verse 10 and Genesis 11 verse 2 most of these names of kings are not known historically from other ancient sources the mention of Lot the son of Abraham's brother gives the reason the story is included. The story suggests that Lot's choice of this initially attractive land may not have been so wise on Genesis 13, 10 to 11. Remember when Lot saw the land, he said, oh, it's, it's nice, full of water, full of land, it's flourishing. But God didn't send Lot there. He, he went there. So his choice was not the wisest thing. If you read Genesis 13. Now, verse 13 and 16 of the reading. Abraham, small band of 318 fighters is able to defeat the collision of forces from the east. Abram rescued Lot and his family. You may say 318 people may be a whole lot, but when you think, when you're talking about different kings and nations teaming up to attack, 
And those kings have thousands of people with them. And, and only 318 people were able to defeat them and take what, what belonged to them. That is a small amount of people. But when God is with you, hey, it doesn't really matter if you only have one. Because look, look at David. It doesn't matter if you only have one. You will defeat because God is with you. Okay? So, Abram cons Abram's concern for Lot is an example of Abram. It's an example of Abram as a blessing to all the families of the earth on Genesis 12, verse 3. Now, verse 17 and 18 describe the two kings of Saddam and Salam. Salam came out to thank Abram for defeating the eastern kings who had attacked them. Salam is another name for the city of Jerusalem. And Psalm 76, verse 2. The Kelonite king, Meshi Zedek of Salam, was also a Kelonite priest of a god named God Most High, on verse 18. The title most high or god most high is an ancient divide title used also for the lord in the old testament in numbers 24 verse 16 and deuteronomy 32 verse 8 and especially in the psalms psalm 50, 57 verse 2 Abraham himself licked Meshi Zedek, God Mo Most High, with the Lord in Genesis 14, 22. The king priest Meshi Zedek is not known from, from other historical sources. He is mentioned only once elsewhere in the Old Testament in a psalm or blessing addressed to one of Israel's later king. In Psalm 110, verse 4. Now, verse 19 to 24, it explained Abram. Again, again, show great generosity to people of other nations. He is a blessing to other families of the earth. On Genesis 12, verse 3. This is what the Bible reads. This is what the Bible say. So, remember, Abram will be a blessing to every nation. Every nation who bless him will be blessed, and every nation who curse him will be cursed. So, it's best to bless Abram, which is later will be named Abraham. It's coming up for that. Okay? Please read, share, like, and, and follow along with us as we go on through the Bible and read it for you. Keep your Bible open and get a pen and paper ready so you could follow along and write down the, what we say.